Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion at the Church of St Mary's in Sandersted on this Mothering Sunday and the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our opening hymn is Tell Out My Song. in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the Collect for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living that in joy and in sorrow 
we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pukki's now going to bring us our readings. A reading from Exodus, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Now, a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Today's psalm is Psalm 34. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are righteous and his ears open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues from them all. He keeps all their bones, not one of them will be broken. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter one, beginning at verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us all in our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is Lord of all hopefulness.
The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The father and mother of the child Jesus were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. A 102-year-old lady was asked if she had any worries. She replied, no, not now that I've got my youngest son in a care home. A 10-year-old said, when your mum is mad at your dad, don't let her brush your hair. And a 13-year-old said, when you get bad marks at school, show it to your mum when she's on the phone. Because I said so, just you wait till your dad comes home. There's no pudding if you don't eat all of your dinner. If someone asked you to jump off a cliff, would you? I've told you a thousand times. Who's she, the cat's mother? Close the door, you weren't born in a barn. Don't pull that face because if the wind changes, you'll stay like it. Stop crying before I give you something to cry about. Any more of that language and I'll wash your mouth out with soap. I imagine we've heard some, if not all, of these things from our mums, although maybe not the soap one anymore. But what about this? One mum put her wedding ring into her little girl's pocket to ease her fear that she would come and get her after school had finished. Today's lectionary gave two possible gospel readings and I decided to read them both. The first was Simeon's prophecy to Mary when Jesus was presented in the temple. And the sword shall pierce your heart too. And the second was Jesus' last human gift from the cross. John, this is your mother. Woman, this is your son. To be honest, I'm not sure that either of these readings are what I would have chosen for Mothering Sunday. But let's delve a little deeper and see. We know from John chapter 7 that Jesus' brothers at the time didn't believe in him. And so from the cross, Jesus sets a precedent for what will become his church, where the only blood that's important is his where strangers can become friends, where the bereaved can feel held, where the abandoned are adopted, the barren consoled, and where all who have been fractured by life's sword can become the family of Jesus. I wonder what Mary thought as she watched her son being crucified. Horror, I am sure, but also the associated shame of a criminal execution the mocking and derision that she heard from the priests. But the uppermost part of her experience was her inability to do anything about the intensity of her child's suffering and the pain that she herself experienced as she sank to her knees while hearing his cry of dereliction. Why have you forsaken me? It was a cry, of course, to the father, as the sins of the world were placed upon his shoulders and he turned his back. But Mary, his earthly mother, also heard it. And I can imagine her saying from the foot of the cross, I am here, I am here, I am here. Mary was there as the earth shook 
and the sky grew dark. She heard the promise made to the thief on the cross next to Jesus that he would see paradise. And it must have given him comfort. But there was no comfort for her, his mother. No paradise at the end of her pain. Only she knew how the father must have felt as the one who had eternally existed with him took his final human breath. Maybe in those moments as her world collapsed, Mary's mind was taken back to when it all started, the event that shaped her life and would change the world. When Gabriel revealed to her that she was to be a mum for the first time, the eternal plan that she would carry inside of her, the shepherds and the kings, the mass crowds, but also Simeon's strange and troubling words right from the beginning that a sword would pierce her heart too. Words which she tried to forget, but now couldn't. At the very beginning of his ministry at the wedding in Cana, Jesus turned 40 gallons of water into the finest wine the guests had ever tasted. Perhaps then Mary reflected upon her own marriage to Joseph, who was also most certainly no longer alive. And sitting watching this newlywed couple, she held herself, held her loss and her loneliness. And now at the foot of the cross, her son's cross, at the end of his ministry, she holds herself again as she watches him slowly die. Just two weeks ago, I stayed at the crematorium following a funeral that I had taken for a three-minute service of three babies who had not lived long enough to see this world. I am told that to lose your child is the worst pain a mother can feel, but perhaps not just mums. In the book of Samuel, we read that King David lost his son Absalom. And we're told that David, deeply moved, went to his room and wept, saying, Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died myself instead of you? I imagine that this is the cry of every good parent for their children, to want to take their place and their pain. But this was not only Mary's son, it was God's son. And Mary needed the gift of salvation that he was giving for all humanity too. This time last year, when we said thank you to and for our mums, we had just entered lockdown. Since then, people have grieved the most terrible losses. Mums, dads, siblings, children, friends, jobs, homes and freedom. Over 120,000 people have died in this country alone. Almost every year, Mothering Sunday invites us to say thank you to God not only for those who gave us life, but also those who in similar ways have birthed life in us. Those who, when times have been hard, have walked our journey with us and who have loved us enough to stand in the gap. And that's what the cross was. It was the gap between us and God that only Jesus could bridge. I'm sure that everyone who followed Jesus knew of his mother and held a tremendous respect and honour for her, for the part that she played in the Incarnation. And yet, at the end, it was only her, Mary Magdalene, Mary of Clopas and John who were with him. Maybe for the others, the loss was just too much to take. As a vicar, I witnessed loss all the time. I was so happy the day that I entered Chester Cathedral where I was ordained in 2011. I had waited and wanted it for so long, and I had all sorts of thoughts about what life as an ordained person would look like. I stupidly thought that I would always have a smile on my face working for God. As I began my first week, my training incumbent was away, and I had ten funerals to take in just a week. Their lives represented over 300 years of love and joy, and now loss. Of course, I have known loss myself, but the depth of grief that I encountered in those ten days almost overwhelmed me. I don't remember those people now, that is, save one. He was a young 30-year-old man who had fallen down the stairs. His mum wanted to see him for the last time in the chapel of rest 
and asked if I would accompany her. Entering the chapel, she ran to the coffin and lifting up her son to her face, she kissed him and with the deepest cry of complete and utter despair, she held him tight to her chest. The depth of that mother's grief has remained with me ever since. A glimpse perhaps of Mary's enduring pain of losing her firstborn. C.S. Lewis wrote two books on pain and sorrow. One, The Problem of Pain, which is more of an apologetic on the nature of suffering, and another, A Grief Observed, which he wrote after watching his wife Joy die from cancer. They are two very different readings on the same human heart trying to understand what we do when we face loss. Lewis is portrayed in the film Shadowlands, an academic who has lived his whole life in an ivory tower, limiting his knowledge of sorrow to the theoretical. But the truth is, Lewis knew what it was to experience unbearable pain from his childhood onwards. From his mother's death when he was just 10, his horribly lonely adolescent years of schooling, to his wounding in World War I and more. Most of life is autobiographical for us all, and our choices and lives are often products of what we experience, and so it was for Lewis. Growing out of his years of sorrow, especially the ones of watching his mother become sick and die, the magician's nephew tells the story of a boy named Diggory who enters into the world of Narnia on the day of its creation. Diggory has mixed motivations, the same for all of us. On the one hand, it is his friend Polly's sake that he takes up the adventure that leads him into Narnia, sure that she is in distress and wants help. But on the other, it is because of his mother's sickness and his own great grief that he is willing to do anything for anyone that might make her better. Aslan, the lion who is king of the new world of Narnia, draws Diggory into a conversation. In his heart, Diggory begins to imagine that he can make a deal with Aslan. I will do this for him if he will do this for me. But the closer he gets to the great lion, the surer he is that no deal can be struck. It is then that he looks up at the lion and sees tears streaming down his face. Lewis writes that Diggory was then sure that the lion cared more about his mother than he did himself. Knowing that to be true, he opened up his heart to the calling that became his, as Aslan had to work for him to do in addressing the heartaches of that very new world. The message of loss and grief is that we cannot hold on to anything. We cannot take anything or anyone for granted and if we love, we cannot spare ourselves from acute pain, for we don't grieve for what we don't love. One of the things that I notice about John receiving Mary into his life in a new way is that Jesus no longer calls her mother but woman, a term of respect, but also of differentiation and change in their relationship. Mary is no longer Jesus' mother, Jesus is now Mary's saviour, two sides of the same coin. Without Mary, Jesus wouldn't have been born. Without Jesus, Mary couldn't be born again. And we can, I think, use this same two-sided coin analogy for love and pain, for we cannot have one without the other. Even God was bound to it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved and God lost. But loss and grief were not the end. Beethoven lived much of his life in fear of deafness. He was concerned because he felt the sense of hearing was essential to creating music of lasting value. When Beethoven discovered that which he feared most was rapidly coming upon him, he was frantic with anxiety. He consulted doctors and tried every possible treatment, but the deafness increased until at last all his hearing was gone. But Beethoven found the strength he needed to go on despite his great loss. 
and to everyone's amazement, he wrote some of his grandest music after he became totally deaf. With all distractions shut out, melodies flooded into his mind as fast as his pen could write them down, and his deafness became his asset. As Mary wept at the cross in great despair, in just another three days, another Mary would weep too, this time at his tomb. She felt lost. She felt empty. Where is he? And what do I do now? And then comes the word that shines light on her deepest darkness, on our deepest darkness. Light that has power to bring hope in the midst of our loss and our grief. Woman, why are you crying? Why do you seek the living among the dead? And then she hears her name, Mary. And out of the deepest and most costly loss in all human history, the death of God's only Son, comes the greatest joy in all eternity. Go and to my brothers and my sisters and tell them, I am going up to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And finding the disciples, Mary tells them, I have seen the Lord, he is risen. No more tears, no more crying. Death has been vanquished and all our pain has an end and a new beginning. It is what we are promised in the book of Revelation when Jesus comes again or we enter into his glory with our own death. But it's not generally what we think of first when we face hard things. The last time we read of Mary, the mother of Jesus, she is in the upper room as she joins with the apostles and others of the early church. What happened next for her, we will just have to wait and ask her. But what's important is that grief and loss didn't end Mary's journey or her life, and it doesn't need to end ours either. When we are in the midst of loss and all we can see is a tomb, it's so hard to find hope. But that's when we need to remember Mary's story, the moment that she held her tummy as the angel told her she was to be the mother of God's son who would save the world from their sins. All of us begin the same way as he did, totally and utterly dependent upon our mother for life, a tiny little life inside our mother's womb. We can't breathe oxygen in there, and so circulation bypasses the lungs with a little valve just outside the heart that is open in the womb, but closes once we are born to allow oxygen from our lungs to enter into our bloodstream. But what works in the womb won't work outside of it, and there's no going back. We cannot get back in. Isn't that the story of what it means to be a Christian? To leave one life behind and to begin a new one. When loss, grief and pain make us wonder what's left. When we have that question, we can look to the cross and see in the lives of those who were there, their story. Because Mary and John didn't stay at the cross. Mary Magdalene didn't remain at the tomb and the disciples didn't stay in the upper room. Jesus wasn't with them anymore in the same way that he had been. And the prospect of living without him was, I'm sure, quite frightening, just as it is when we lose something or someone that has been a huge part of our lives, indeed, our life even. But in that loss, in that pain, in that death, if we listen, we can hear him speak our name saying, I am risen, I am here, I am here, I am here. Amen.
And so we say together the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, in our worship today we say thank you for all that our mothers are to us and for all that they do for us. But we also know that for some people this is a difficult day holding hurt, grief and perhaps anger. We pray that you would draw alongside those who are hurting today to comfort them and surround them with your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for women who grieve because they are unable to have the children they long to hold and love. For mothers who grieve because, like Mary, they have had to see their child die too soon. For mothers who grieve because they are cut off from their children by disappointment, anger, bitterness or illness. For mothers who are worried or afraid for their child's well-being or safety. Please bring healing, comfort, forgiveness and peace into the hearts and minds of hurting mothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for children who grieve because they have lost their mother through illness, accident or violence. For children whose mothers have been unable to give them the love and care they need so that they now live in families and homes which were not originally their own. For children who are still living in homes that are unsafe and with adults who cannot put the child's needs before their own. For children who through hardship and poverty are not being provided with an adequate diet or basic medical care. Heavenly Father, please bring love and security, comfort and hope into the lives of hurting children today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, please, please bring healing and forgiveness into the lives of all those for whom today brings painful memories of broken relationships and loss. Help us all to find in our brothers and sisters in Christ a loving family with whom we may show your love and tender care for all your hurting children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, trusting in your promises to hear us when we pray in faith, we ask you to bless all our relationships in the families of our homes, our church and our community so that through our lives your loving will for us may be done. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere. Loving creator, ever living God. For like a mother you gather your people to you. Longing to gather us in your arms as chicks are gathered to the mother hen. For you weep over our sins and our pride, tenderly drawing us from hatred and judgment into the warmth of your embrace. For you comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us, and with pure milk you feed us. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your healing touch makes sinners righteous. In your compassion bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven may your love prepare us. Your family on earth now lifts our voice to join the family of heaven, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, with all who stand in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. There are some notices coming up on your screen now just to inform you about our services um, over the Easter period. I'm going to bring our worship to a close with our final hymn, Great is Thy Faith.
May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless you. God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless you. And God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless you. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.